This world is in need. Cynicism. Skepticism. Pain. Confusion. Conflict and division. Grip our society. Our humanity. A hundred years ago, a man named P.C. Nelson saw the need and decided to do something about it. Our institution was founded with a vision to give men and women a better understanding of the Word of God. So they can answer the call, be equipped, and begin to heal the world. The need remains, and now it's our turn to act. Will we answer the call in this generation? Will we be the ones who bring light to the darkness? Or will we miss the opportunity and let the world pass us by? Throughout the history of this institution, we have said yes to training spirit-empowered leaders for every arena of culture. From the marketplace to the mission field. Today, we say yes again to the call to reach more people. To extend our borders and take the mission further. Today, we say yes to the next 100 years of taking the whole gospel to the whole world. Will you give your whole life, story, talents, gifts, calling, ambition, for the whole world? Will Will you you say say yes? All right, welcome back, sports fans, basketball fans, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Sagu Sports Network proudly bringing you today's, I, this is a regional, I, I believe it, that's what they call it. Second that's, round. Yeah, it's round two, uh, pod four of the Naismith bracket, and uh, the two under seeds actually pulled off the miracles, and... Um, we're going to get the pleasure of seeing Evangel play Baker in the Schaefer Center. This is the first time, Delton, in Sagu Sports Network history that we broadcast two teams that are not Sagu. It's crazy. So, th- yeah, it's it history. And, and actually, it's a historical broadcast because this will be the very last broadcast as Sagu Sports Network. We are now becoming Nelson University, and uh, <clears throat> it's a very exciting time around here because you 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 accept the challenge. Sure. There, there's uh, a future with a new name out there, and uh, we kind of have to rebrand. We're not even sure what we're going to call it at the moment, but uh, 13 seasons as the Sagu Sports Network, uh, and and I, we feel like as a brand name, we've left uh, a, a good mark there. We're not changing, though. We're going to still bring you the excellent uh, production and broadcast. And uh, so have been, have been phenomenal from day one. So since my whole time here, it's been a blessing having you. And well, it's it, sad to see the name I, go, but I'm glad you're still it's here. True. Yeah, all those things. but uh, excited for the change. And, of course, you've brought a lot of wins. So <laughs> it's, very, it's very easy to uh, – to, um, Feel good about your broadcast when sure. you win. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's and true. I, no, no, it's for real because uh, I have to kind of give the after uh, game pep talk to the guys. Hey, look, the broadcast didn't lose. <laughs> no. The team lost. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're all sagu and right. we're sad, but uh, you know we d- we did a good job. But uh, uh, there's that. All right, back to Baker sure. Evangel last night, and I'm proud of you for oh. sitting in here. I of course, mean, so. you know, coming in and uh, we're the host site, so yeah. obviously. Uh, we have some responsibility to be here, but you don't have a responsibility to sit and be on camera and talk about your loss last night. So I, I'm proud of you for that. Baker came in and um, and and just did well. Yeah. They they played extremely they well. Did. A played great really hard. defense kept you guys down. Sure. Your, your scoring was below yeah. average, and so uh, hats off to Baker. And then Evangel, of course, the number two uh, Florida Memorial came in and. Man, their size. When you see them yeah. on the floor, it is very intimidating. So it was kind of this uh, David versus Goliath, uh, sure. at least uh, optically. Yeah, when and you see it, because the body types yeah. and the talent, very, very high for Florida Memorial. But Absolutely. You know, in NAI, you know, I say it all the time, NAI you basketball do. is uh, uh, about connectedness and, and IQ and all those little things. And when you get to this you yep. know, level and the matchup. So you play it's, somebody that is, is doing things that you're not used to seeing. and. Yep. 
you know, Evangel's a well-oiled machine. And oh, they got a phenomenal coach, and they're a very good team. Don't let that record fool you. That is a right, yeah. um, middle of the season, weird little slump for them, but they're much better than what it, what, what you would uh, see on their record. So so an important note, obviously, if you're a basketball fan, you probably recognize this through the, the years, but uh, teams – tend to peak they ebb and flow and not all teams peak at the end i would say baker evangel are sure. finding a peak right now yeah i mean they're just playing their best basketball of the year and um i was so impressed with uh, coach capel's yeah. game plan last night both of them. and and they yeah. oh yeah coach absolutely yeah, Co- no, coach Dooley. and it's it's a funny it's a great matchup because you see you know, Evangel is so efficient offensively, yep. and they do so many things well that it's just all impossible to guard. And then you see Baker, who is very disruptive defensively and can guard every position. Every They can switch everything, yep. um, you know, give you unique looks and good pressure and, you know, can do a lot of different things to disrupt your offense. So it's a it's a, it's a a good give and take, and it's, yep. it's an exciting game to want to see because, you know, who's going to win the style battle today? You yep. know, how's that thing going to go? So, so Baker Evangel used to play in the same conference, the Heart of America. <laughs> Evangel is now in the Kansas Athletic Conference, oh. and uh, and I think it's the first year in KCAC. Yes, is they that just right? came in this year, and so, so not this a lot of is, surprises. <laughs> yeah, no, Baker's an old foe. Funny that they have to come down to Texas to rematch, yep. uh, but uh, neither coach is unfamiliar with one another, and these teams kind of know each other, and. Um, I, th- this is going to be a very interesting match because of uh, the the past performance knowledge that will yeah. come into play. Uh, Evangel comes in with the win last night. They're now 19 and 10 overall, and Baker's 23 and 9. Uh, both of these teams, I, after talking with both coaches, I think they're 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 pretty confident that they know what each other will how they will attack sure. and what they do. And both said, we just got to play great defense. That's the key. Yep. And, of course, in tournament basketball, you know, we know uh, defense wins championships a lot of times. But they so both have a veteran team, too, with a lot of returners. So they played last year. Um, I'm sure they know yeah. everybody. So, I mean, like, yeah, it's yeah, not, no, there's it's not a, a whole it, lot of new pieces. Yeah. It's a lot no, of they, they, I mean, there are some, but, you know, but the they names. know exactly yeah, who they, they are. Yep. They, they, the both coaches knew. Sure. Uh, some, speaking of players, uh, key players for Evangel to watch, um, Pritchett, oh, man, he had such a great game last great night. Great player. Uh, I, I mean, maybe his best game of the season. He, he may have had a couple games where he scored a little sure. more, but I it just all around. It's poise. Yeah. Oh, the um, poise was the, the Just the, the patience, the poise, yep. the complete understanding of what they're trying to do. Yep. He's in total control. Can't speed him up. Um you know, which caused Florida Memorial a lot of yep. problems and who's a very good team who does speed you up and, and, you know, can get you on the glass. And they just withstood all their little runs and were patient. He's just – he's phenomenal. So he'll be number two in the Evangel jersey. Number five, Mason. Uh, he averages 10 a game. They just need a good, solid uh, average performance from Mason. He he does a lot of things that uh, you don't see on the, uh, the, the, the stat sheet. But um, if they can get that normal production from Mason – uh, I think uh, that's going to set the pace yeah. and, and bring some uh, security blanket. But I was most impressed last night with Daybalt. Yeah. Uh, he's number three. And, man, at the end, he came in clutch. He got in. He was very excited. Be- oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, oh, no. he was very and, live. He was bringing and, and all the energy and got them fired. Yeah. No, no doubt. Uh, it just Catalyst would for them. not let it yeah. die. And uh, when every time when, when uh, Florida Mem would – would start pushing and, and, and cut it down mm-hmm. and, and start making, he'd get in there and make a big play, whether it's just tying the ball up mm-hmm. or just taking a charge. He got hit a lot. Remind me of right. Noah, yeah. Noah Bowling exactly from Sagu. Right. Yeah. Just took it, and left and right, making got plays, right back getting up. Getting on the ground, just, getting back up, whatever it takes to win. Those yeah. are winners. And, you know, those are the ones that elevate you at this yep. time. And, you, and, you know, Evangel's unique because, you know, as good as Pritchett is and, and he is valuable and he's yep. great, it's not really about one guy for them. Yep. So the, and it's their system and it's how they play and the ball's constantly moving and you never know where it's coming from. They're all ready to shoot. They're all ready to cut. They're all passing the ball on time. Yep. So, you know, it's the winning plays and the little things and can they get stops and will they, you know, do the small things that are going to elevate them and take them to the next level. And Absolutely. Yeah, exactly what you're I, talking and about. I think uh, uh, coffee needs to come in he yeah. was a big uh, spark uh he would uh he come coming off the bench um mm-hmm. both in the first and the second sure. halves he really just got things started up so i think th- if it, it 
if Dave Ball and Coffee get off and they really yep. do what they do um, at a high level, this could be a Vangel's game. But let's talk a little bit about Baker, sure. Baker before we go down yeah. to pregame. Um, uh, you, you have the most insight sure. now. And sure. uh, uh, sorry for your loss. Oh, okay. um, yeah. Uh, but uh, Coach Dooley put a uh, game plan. Those guys attacked well. They played great defense. T tell, give us a little insight. What did they do so good that they could bring it into the game today well, to I, get a win? You know, for them, I think it starts with their defense. So I think that they're a um, very good defensive team, and they've got, you know, Rigatuso number 11 and Harvey 12 are great forwards, and they're tough because they're not really traditional bigs. Um, you know, they're more wings that can move around and shoot the ball a little bit, and their drive, you know, all of their players are very Just good take to it the at basket. You. No, really yeah. good. Going to the basket, that little mid-post area where they post up, um, all of them do it, and they interchange what they do, which makes them really good. Um, but I, but I honestly think their defense kind of sets the tone for for who they are, and I think that's um, because they're versatile. They're so versatile; they can do so many different things that they don't. You know, it's not like a traditional way you can go pick them apart and be like, "This guy's not good at doing this or that," because they'll just switch things out yep. and move side to side and do it all. But um, I love Ty Henry. I think oh, he's a great man, player. He's so good. Um, much like I was saying with Pritchett for Evangel, he plays very similarly, yep. and it's just very patient and poised, knockdown shooter. If you leave him open, yep. can post you up a little bit. But uh, he does a lot of things, and then um, obviously, obviously uh, Smith and um, number three, I uh, can't remember his name, but number Dylan three, Smith. yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yep. So, and those guys, those guys are um, also phenomenal players and um, downhill right drivers, yep. um, right hand drivers, and will, will make open threes. But they're out also the leaders of their defense, so yep. they set Absolutely. the tone on the perimeter defensively, yeah. constantly and poking at sure. the ball. That just it, and so annoying. And you know they, um, you know, you know, hats off to them. I know you said sorry for your loss or whatever. You know, I, I honestly believe I've been coached in the NBA for a long time so when you get to this point of the season you know the team that's going to make the plays at the end of the game and the team that you know plays a little bit more connected is the team that usually ends up winning these, these things because yep. everybody's good everybody's yep. a pretty even yep. and they made the plays last night so hats they off really to them did. Yeah. Um, he did a great job coaching his guys uh, coach Dooley who's a who's a great man and a good yeah. guy and um, I'm excited to see the two coaches I know this yeah. is a player thing no, but I'm excited to watch thing. the coaches I think they're I, both too. I think they're yeah. both phenomenal I got to spend time with both of them and uh, we ran the interviews uh, of all four of of you yesterday a lot of great feedback I think that was neat to get to see the I inside works of coaches sure. what they're thinking how they feel about coming in and 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 preparing so I am looking uh, at that coaching that little chess yeah. match that that happens but ultimately how do the players execute yeah. you, you can draw up the plan no all doubt. you want but uh, yeah. they got to execute right all right we're getting ready. It's uh, the buzzer has gone off, so the players are now on the floor. I'm gonna throw it down to the court and uh, the pregame festivities, the opening prayer, the national anthem, and the starting lineups, and then we'll be right back for game time action. You're watching the Sagu Sports Network. And no matter what the result is, whether win or lose, we give you all the glory because in your name we play and pray. Amen.
And now the starting lineups for the number 15 seed, Evangel University. At guard, a 5'11 senior out of Carter Go, Costa Rica. Number zero, Manrique Alvarado. At guard, a 6'3 grad student out of Rolla, Missouri. Number two, Josh Pritchett. At guard, a 6'3 sophomore out of Norwood, Missouri. Number three, Garrett DeVault. At guard, a 6'3 senior out of Nixon, Missouri. Number five, Josh Mason. And at forward, a 6'7 senior out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Number 21, Bryce Hunt. And the head coach for the Valor is Bert Keppel. And now for the number 10 seed, Baker University. At guard, a 6'2 senior year. At Stillwater, Oklahoma, number one, Dylan Smith. At guard, a 6'5 sophomore. At Topeka, Kansas, number two, Ty Henry. At forward, a 6'5 junior. At Kansas City, Missouri, number three, Ahmed Magoob. At forward, a 6'6 junior. At Omaha, Nebraska, number 11, Noah Rigatuso. At forward, a 6'7 junior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, number 12, Quinton Henner. The head coach is Sean Dooley. The officials for today's contest are Yawan Gatewood, Leslie Uhl, and Eric Ivory. All right, we're back. It's live in the Schaefer Center. And not quite the crowd that uh, we had last <laughs> night, Coach. It was a great was. Crowd, for, uh, crowd for both games, and uh, that was really neat to see. Of course, four you know, teams as fans, it, home fans. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> there's no home fans here. And, uh, and that has depleted the bleachers just a little bit. But uh, I am anticipating a fantastic uh, close game uh, probably a good defensive battle as well so maybe a game in the 70s Seven, yeah that would be hey, are, you, are, you, are you going 70s or uh, 80s or 60s I would say higher than the 70s so you're, we'll, you're we'll going 80s now. well okay well that's a good start <laughs> right there great alley-oop from Pritchett to Hunt and Evangelist the first one on the board Yeah, that's what that's I mean, that's pretty much the name of the yeah, game for that, Baker. That, so that right there, they're going to do a lot of action, a lot of movements to pretty much try to create some kind of uh, mid post post up right there in the short corner or, or for several of their guys. And if you can do a good job keeping it out of his hands, then great. But if he catches it, Harvey or Rigatuso, really both of them, yep. if they catch it in there, very difficult to, to manage once they get the ball in a good position. Yeah, that was a good collapse by Evangel right there. There's four guys on Harvey. So uh, he, he did have open players all around the uh, perimeter, but he got fouled, did what he knows how to do, and sure. uh, then makes both free throws. And, you know, that's one of the things is he's not, um, you know, he doesn't kick the ball a ton. He's going to try to score it more than do the other things, but he's so difficult to not foul, so difficult to, yeah. to keep in front of you that, um, you know, it's, it puts a lot of pressure on you. He, uh, and he's got quick springs uh, in his feet, so he does get up really quick. He leans, he's shifty, so he's, he's very lean, and he can slide through uh, tandem defense. He's got a lot of uh, great assets, L nice little toolbox. I like the early aggression from both teams already out the gates. Um, two foul call, now foul call on both ends of the floor in an early early uh, transition layup. So you like to see what, what um, teams show up and look like they're ready to go, and it seems like both these guys are ready to play. And now three for three in scoring possessions. Not a great pass. Uh, saw Harvey cutting, but Hunt was there to get the steal. There's Dave Vaught going at it again. And he would not be denied the second time. And he's coming off a fantastic game yesterday. Picking up where he left off. Hunt slaps it off the glass. Doesn't go out of bounds. And here come 
the Valor. Ty Henry gets the block Walking against both ends of the floor. I wouldn't leave Rigatusa so open, that wide open. He's a scorer. He might not be the most adept uh, long-range shooter, sure. but he's a scorer, so Definitely. he's got a lot of willpower. Nice pick from behind, and then Devault repays the favor. Hunt, Evangel, feeling good about their offensive pressure, so not breaking down too much, just attacking the basket. Yeah, early tur turnovers are uh, plaguing Baker a little bit. Gotten, they're having transition opportunities, just getting a little ahead of themselves, turned it over a couple times, and it's, it's made a big difference. And Hunt gets a quick foul there. He's got caught way out guarding point guard Dylan Smith. And uh, maybe not exactly where Coach Capel wanted him. Uh, he, he had to sit quite a bit uh, yesterday due to some foul trouble. Yeah. yeah, that's the key to the game, keeping him in. Now he's back down in his habitat, as they would say, two, in the paint. Two quick threes from Rick so he's usually pretty aggressive. Want to start getting back downhill and getting to the basket, creating those opportunities for himself. Ty Henry with the rebound. Gets it out to Rigatuso. Back to Henry. Baker doing a good job swinging around the perimeter. Wide open from downtown is Harvey. He misses. This is a, a fun little defensive offensive matchup between Ty Henry and Pritchett. They look like they could be brothers. Right, seriously. And we talked about both of them and how meaningful they are to their team. Do not leave Henry wide open, and that's the reason. Yeah, he can really shoot the ball. And, you know, the, the funny thing about Evangel is, you know, they, they have a lot of shooters, and they hit a lot of threes yesterday. But if you really pay attention to how they play, you know, a lot of their offense and the reason they're so efficient is because they are so good at the rim, and they create all these opportunities to get – downhill and get easy layups and easy plays in the paint and so you're so worried about them shooting the threes and then they create you with something or draw fouls because they're going by you and and they're willing passers and very difficult team to defend big hit there a collision trying to go for the ball and that's gonna be uh, dylan smith's first foul of the game coach dooley's going to give him a quick break Baseline inbound play, get it in easily. Mason pops it out to Pritchett. And here comes Coffee. he's new to the game. He falls down, throws it away. There's another one from the big guy. Taking a, a page out of Cortland Blake's book, yeah. trying to work down low and on the outside. Yeah, he can shoot the ball. It's a, he's, a, he's a good shooter, one of the better shooters on their team, honestly, and um, does a great job stretching you out. And you got You don't want to just let him keep having it. And you know, he's, they haven't had a lot of success going to the basket yet, but they hit a couple threes here now and starts to open things up, and you're going to start seeing them be aggressive to the rim here soon. Pritchett trying to get the ball. Dylan Smith. Oh, I'm sorry, not Smith. That is uh, Wittick who's in now for Baker. He's got the uh, assignment to try to shut down the sharpshooter. That was the air ball. Great defense right there. Just kept him out of where he wanted to go. Tried to get to a spot, couldn't get there. Forced him to shoot in, which he doesn't do very often. So you got him to take a shot that wasn't in rhythm. Then that's good um, disruptive defense, which they're very good at. comes Rigatuso. He's so good around the bucket, doesn't get the foul, wanted the foul. 
and it bounces off the rim. A little too much contact from Wittick there. And this is going to bring the first media timeout into play. You know, these players are going to have to, you know, they've called a couple of those uh, pressure, perimeter pressure fouls early. So you're going to have to be smart with your body. You don't want to just give away fouls and make them earn it because they're already going to put you at disadvantage anyway. Um, but if you're Baker, you know, a little bit of a slow start and Evangel started quickly shooting it, but you're down two points. You're shooting 29% from the field to start the game. Um, I think you can see their defense settling down a little bit to where they were a little spit, head was spinning a little early, but yep. um, I think it's a pretty good, you know, pretty this even down what, a little bit now. It's kind of what they did sure. to you. You guys pushed out and yep. got a little bit right of a lead. They didn't lose their sure. composure and just believed. Yeah, and better, right now, veteran team and a veteran uh, police yeah. team has been here. You know, they made, were in the tournament last year and, you know, another another year out here, and both these teams are, are uh, neither one of these teams are going to be, right. the moment's not going to be too big. You They're both got plenty of veteran players. You can't overemphasize how important experience is yeah. in tournament play, especially postseason sure. tournament play. It is such a big player, and when you're used to being there, sure. um, I mean, the nerves can just drown you if you're if you're not used to it, and uh, you get, you kind of got to be in those moments a few times uh, to just remind yourself, hey, wait a minute, you know, this is not this is just my nerves. This is don't be overwhelmed by right. it. That was a quick whistle off the ball. I not okay. He says Magoob yeah, he, he kinda pushed grabbed out. Him. He kind of grabbed yeah. him when he got beat on the curl and kind of just yep. tugged his hips a little bit. It wasn't a lot. A, I could have let it play, touchy. but yeah. he definitely did grab him around the way. So, you know, I mean, that's, like I said, that's one of the things that puts you in disadvantage a lot. So you feel <laughs> like you're behind you when you try to do something to get ahead of it. Pritchett goes down to Coffee. Coffee going to try to work. The box, and he gets fouled. It's a good post move. Getting in and getting that foul on Harvey. Yep, got him to leave his feet. Get somebody to leave the feet, then you've already got all the advantage. Don't even really need to make a great move after that point. Yep. And got him in the air. Very uh, savvy move. Now he's at the free throw line. That is Harvey's first foul. Baker's sixth foul. And Coffee gets his two to go. He gets bumped and he puts it in. That's he's, a great play, Coach. He does that all the time. Yeah. So, he's honestly watching a lot of film. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. He'll jump off the wrong foot and be sideways and almost backwards. And yep. It looks like it's, oh, that was out of control. But I'll no, be honest no. with you, he does it, it a lot. So. No, it, it really didn't. <laughs> I, I feel like uh, guys that attack the basket, yeah. they know how to create that 50-50 contact. Sure that will, in the ref's eyes, give them advantage. And Baker's really good in transition, so one thing you'll see is they up the ball very quickly up the sideline, and um, they'll get the defense on their heels early, and they try to score an early upper, uh, position, which is all this was, was an early driving kick, and man, great rebound right there. Henry attacks, now gets it to Rigatuso, back out to Henry. Henry got set, and he's two for two from the three-point line. Not going to miss a lot of a lot of open jumpers. Banjo comes down, still looking real poised. Alvarado trying to lock up his defender, couldn't do it. And quick put back by Coffee. He's in the right place at the right time. Oh, that's, yeah. He got ahead. I, I, Coffee's asking why, but when you're ahead and you create any contact, oh. you're vulnerable. That was a foul. Yeah, he fouled him from behind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he tried to put his hands straight up. I don't know if he was, no, ask, he was asking just why. Him, yeah, chest out. He just walked through him. And, he, yeah. and, you know, he created the angle, got him with the pump fake, and it was kind of over from that point. So, like probably needs said, a little it, help it, from his teammates behind is, him there. This is kind of what he does. This is Definitely. how 
Uh, Harvey works. And you got to stay in front of him. He's already hit a three, so puts that in your thought. Yeah. So now he starts jumping out there, or maybe it's a two. So um, or he hit one, yeah. So they start, you know, jumping at him, and then he, now he's getting downhill, and it's a challenging player to guard. Yep. He hit the second, missed the first. So he's two for four from the free throw line. I'm sorry, he's uh, one for three. Little baby hook there from Smith. He just came in the game. And Coffee is going to go out with uh, one foul. And Mason is going to take a little break. That brings in Salvi. Good energy from Coffee there, though. He did a, he did a good job on offense, especially just creating um, lots of opportunities for them. And Hunt's back in the game for the Valor. Rigatuso goes high off the glass. It's a little too hard. And they're going to keep it as Baker's ball. Great job by Harvey right there, just creating that extra possession. Honestly, it was three on one. Couldn't get the ball, but he kept the first one up. And then, you know, I think that was a pretty good call. He came in from behind and knocked it out of bounds. Says Henry, Henry makes so many plays for them. Oh, that's nice. That's it right there. He gets to his right hand immediately. No hesitation, straight downhill to his right hand. And um, if you can stay on top of it, then you can limit a little bit of what he wants to do. But if but if you're not ready when he catches it, it's you're probably already behind. Yeah, and he did that so well last night. He got downhill and, and just created contact, was able to go through it, and that's going to be a foul on Ty Henry just for swinging. He might not have actually gotten a lot of it, but yeah, that arm you know, goes forward. Yeah, at that position, he's got the ball. He's going up strong again. It's probably, probably already lost your battle yep. there. But Some, Sometimes you, uh, you know. and, and, and this is just ex where experience takes you, but you get, you're not going to win every battle, and it's important to know which battles to fight for and which ones to just let go if you want to win the war. Sure. Hunt gets it to go, got the old-fashioned three-point play. Don't leave him open very often. <laughs> he, shoots the, he shoots the lights out, too, and when he comes into the game, their offense changes almost to, to find him shots because, you know, he's a... Microwave, if you if you look at their stats, he'll play yeah. maybe 10 minutes a game, but he shoot, he might shoot the most threes on their team, so he just can really, got, really shoot the definitely ball. Definitely got the best shooting yeah. percentage. Shoots a lot of them, too, so in a, in a short amount of time. Well, he had a good game last night. He came in and had, was, made some impact. Henry gets the rebound. Here comes Baker. Gets it back out to Henry in the two lane. Gattuso goes hard. It's a good strip by Evangel. And now a big possession for Evangel. Got a chance to extend the lead. Oh, good defense taking away the, the angles and discouraging the drive before it ever started. Cavalier came in last night and, and oh, really hit did. some threes and just really yeah. opened that game up. So, not surprised to see him do it early. Rigatuso's so third three attempt already, which is which is kind of a lot for him already in this game. So, I think that you know they're discouraging the drives and and kind of keeping him outside. That one goes up high, off the rim, easily rebounded by a, a swarming, crashing Evangel. Defense. Oh, 
Oh, that's a great cut across the middle. Dave Alt, and I mentioned it in pregame. When uh, Dave Alt and, and Coffee really start putting numbers up on the scoreboard, it's going to be tough because you know the getters are going to get theirs. Yep. A great play from Ty Henry again, yeah, showing more points. It was, it was. Not a great. A rushed. <laughs> Henry jumps on the, the scores table. All right. I think we're going to go to media timeout. Yeah. And uh, so. The way the media timeouts work in, in the first two rounds of uh, this tournament, um, they get a uh, free timeout at 15, 10, and 5. So three per half. And we see you, Christy Capel, talking about the brothers Capel over there on the Evangel side. And we had a great uh, conversation with. Coach Burt Capel, and he is just doing big things at Evangel. Right now, he is 64 and 30 uh, with his short career at Evangel as a head coach. And uh, this is his third straight appearance in the NAIA National Tournament. So, yeah, he's a great coach, doing a phenomenal, phenomenal yeah. job. So, you know, Let, letting the numbers do his talk. Sure. Yeah. You know, obviously with a um, little school affiliation from us and, yeah, and them, yeah, we pay yeah. attention to what's going on over Absolutely. there. So I've been very impressed with him since the day he got on campus. So he's doing a great job holding it down and, and doing wonderful things. Yeah. And he's a good guy. Yeah. Great guy. He's a really so. good guy. I had so much fun uh, just hanging out with him uh, and doing the interview. And his brother, as the assistant coach, Great holds pass. a lot of records uh, in the Evangel jersey. And yeah, so Rick Atuso, man, he, I, he is uh, he's one of those guys that kind of surprises you with his athleticism. Yeah. He's got a quick burst, and he can really jump high. And he's always moving. Always. Hunt, nice, just got his feet set. Stayed strong. He's got big shoulders, so people are not going to just push him around. And he did a really good job yesterday against the bigs of Florida Memorial. You know, it's funny. I, you know, I was talking earlier about Evangel and um, their three-point shooting and how you, you see it and you think that's what it is. But I think they're 0 for 4 from 3 in this game, and that's all they've taken, and they're still scoring the ball because, you know, they're just dominant in the paint. So it's just it's a, it's a, it's a tricky matchup. It really is and being disciplined and staying in between the ball and your man. Mason a little bit long from three, kind of on cue. Got, I think he uh, heard you and just kind of wanted to <laughs> Said, Let's take one pipe anyway. down. Coach, we can shoot. Oh, the ball, that's what he does. That's what he's just scrappy. All over the place, making extra possessions. Doing the he, little things, that's yeah. the, the winners. The yeah, winner. he, yeah. Uh, that that uh, warrior mentality, yep. never giving up. He's out of bounds, still just getting like going three. at it. <laughs> just like my number three, yeah, similar, yeah, similar same type of that's thing. Right. Just maybe it's a number thing. I don't know, but um, he does a, he does a great job, and um, you know those guys are so valuable to winning you basketball games. Dylan Smith back in the game. They get it to Harvey. Harvey thinks he. Has a mismatch. An easy rebound for Hunt. Hunt now has four rebounds in the game. Nine points and then just one foul. Mason's got to get it back to Hunt. Oh, nice cut from Salvi. Easy left-handed layup. 
Give Mr. Hunt uh, an assist there. That was a good read. A great pass. There's Dave Ball. Trying to get the stuff. <laughs> Dylan Smith just standing there like, come on. I think I think I got a lot more ball than hand. I think he had that look on his face thinking, you really tried to dunk that? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was surprised he's by like, it. Yeah, I think yeah. it. And he was like, <laughs> surprised he was like don't. I, I definitely wasn't thinking Dave <laughs> was going up to, to, for the stuff. Great play again, though. He's just the X factor. The X factor. Making everything happen. And now Coffee's back in the game. And I think that's a dangerous combination with Dave Vaught and Coffee because these guys really go to work on you and all the off the stat sheet stuff. They would just keep uh, nagging and keeping the ball alive, running you around. Yeah, important stretch right here for, for Baker with Rigatuso on the bench. Um, finding offense and making sure they, you know, stay connected right here. Might look for Ty Henry in the corner. He he, he likes to sink down, uh, especially when Rigatuso's not in. No running from uh, side to side, trying to get him open. He's on the wing now. Wittick gets it to Harvey. Harvey's feeling good about that. No, he... Oh, what a tap. Got his own rebound, tapped it back. Yeah, one of the best parts of his game is his second jump. That was something we talked about a lot. It's not the first shot always that he takes, but it's the, you know, keeping plays alive if you don't box him out right away. I want to say that is Pritchett's yes. first shot of the game. Yes. And uh, Our first basket, I think he best. Definitely first range, basket. Yeah. So he's got a quick three there. Yeah, that, that we just confirmed that is just his second shot. So uh, he's been D'ing up quite a bit. He's he does have two fouls, so um, that's why we haven't seen him a lot in the first half. Yeah, and you know he's he's not really one to if it's not coming his way and the offense is is you know something else is being given Forcing the issue and he's not going to just problem. come down and sh get yep. a lot of shots up to make sure he gets the shots up he's going to play within the system and very poised player and so you know but the the scary thing about him is you think you're not you're holding him down pretty good and yep. if he gets you know four or five in a row he's going to make them so um, you got to stay disciplined the whole time and rogers is now in the game for evangel and he's he's the big he's the center i guess you would call him more like they're running two forwards, but uh, and it, he did some good things yesterday as well. Just keeping the ball alive uh, and out of the hands of Florida men, which was so important. I mean, part of the game plan. Just don't let them dominate you in the paint. And Evangel did not. Oh, good feed. Off of Coffee's hand, hard off the glass, doesn't go in. Good discipline right there by Richardson on the backside of the wall. Not fouling and trying to stay straight up in the vertical. Long bounce. And Mason gathers it. Pritchett. Oh, that might actually be a foul. Yep, I think that is going to be a foul. They're going to, I think they're going to get Richardson. Yep. That'll be his first foul of the game. And that will put uh, Salvi on the line. He's got two points right now and a rebound. And one assist. He gets the first one to go. So the next foul Baker commits will put Evangel in the double bonus.
The Baker is also in the bonus. Be interesting to see how long uh, Rigatuso stays on the bench, and there he is. I, well, <laughs> not long, Coach. There you go. I, I was actually going to say I, I I would imagine Coach Dewey yeah. is trying to wait for and and trying to get him his rest, trying it, to make sure he has enough to wait finish. For the media timeout, I'm sure. Oh, and I don't know if uh, the refs round up and down on media timeout or if it just has to be passed. Um, no, it's it's so usually it's right after the five minute, the okay. first whistle after yep. five minutes. That'll bring Rigatuso in after this shot. <laughs> Referee just checking to make sure uh, we are on in a two, a full two free throws instead of uh, being a one and one. He did not make the call, so that's yeah. why. Well, I think he might have announced it as one on one, and then yeah, I think was he did. Quickly reminded by a couple players. Wait a minute, isn't hey, it no, two? No, 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 no. <laughs> I get two. Baker's doing a solid job weathering the storm right now. They got their their guys back in now, and so just. You know, these next couple of minutes, obviously, the last, the last five minutes of each half, or last five, first five of each half are pretty important. Oh, nice hands from the big guy. Quentin Harvey gets a steal. Wittick gets it out to Richardson. Looked good, but bounced off the front of the rim. You know, these, these Saturday second games of these back-to-backs are just not the not the most ideal for jump shooting. So, True. you know, I it's, mean, it's, it's hard to just, yeah, yeah it's a, your it's, legs. you're fighting and all your energy and hard-fought games yesterday and off hard-fought games yesterday, and then you're just finding whatever you can to, to finish this one. So, you know, you're seeing a, not seeing a lot of sharp shooting from either team, but that's, that's kind of how it's going to be, and somebody's going to make some big ones, and then you're going to, you know, see who can – dig down and find a way to win the game. This will be the media timeout, the third one and last media timeout. So both coaches doing a good job using the media timeouts to create the breaks, saving up the the uh, game timeouts that they each have. You're, you're giving less, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, only yeah. get, you only get four. So yeah, they, only get and, four. and honestly, if you don't use one in the first half, you lose it. So um, it's a it's a so it's three in the second half you get four total. So if you don't use one in the first half, it goes away. You can't have more than three in the second half. Okay. So um, the media timeouts, you know, for some of the, some of the leagues um, in NAI use them sometimes. Uh, ours doesn't. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if the, either one of these do. I know they do in some of the games and maybe not all of them, but it's definitely a new thing when you get to the national tournament and trying to well, navigate even, it. And it's even different at uh, the, the final 16. Sure. So it, they yeah. give you four sure. per half. Yep. And they, they go 16, 12, 8, and 4. Right. And uh, I, I'm not sure. Do you know why they do it different between first and second round? Okay. So I, probably because they – I mean, I, I think it's the ads that they're running on. They're, they're the one broadcast here. It's different. And we're at 16 different places right now. So yeah. every media outlet's different. So I think they're just giving, you know, just enough for everybody to do what it is they need um, for the ones that have sponsors and things like that. And then – um, you know, when they get to Kansas City, it's uniform. So I think they're they're in control of the ads there, and they pro I'm sure they have ad buys and all those things. So, um, you know, just another aspect of it. But it's as everybody's dealing with the same thing. So learning how to do that and manage it. I know um, there was a, um, I mean, just in particular for myself, there was a stretch last night where I wanted to call a timeout. Yeah, just no, I was like, don't have enough. Yeah. So I'm just gonna have to weather the Preserving. storm. Just telling them like, just yeah. find, just weather the storm, find a way to get through it because you can't use them all up. So. Um, yeah, just, you know, everybody's going through it, so it's something that you figure out and do the best you can for your team. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's a late call, actually. They're going to call that a jump. It, yeah, it's it stuck is, in the room. It did get stuck. So. I should have the right call. Yeah, it's stuck, it is. So. It was so quick, though. Hey. 
And they're going to repossession that uh, to Baker, which is where the arrow was yeah. going. Um, uh, Coach Dooley asking if that could be reviewed. Didn't want to use the possession up there because he got the rebound. <laughs> Well, it definitely stuck. I think they got that one right. Yeah, no, it did stick for sure, 100%. <laughs> oh, that's a quick move. Great cut. Nice cut from Rigatuso. And this is kind of what they did. You guys had yeah. the lead last night, and yeah. uh, they weathered Stay the close. storm. And then that last five Stay minutes, yeah. they just kept it in striking distance. Richardson with a great rebound, hold off, and a one-handed rebound. Oh my goodness! Good I mean, when, when he's on, you get you just got to extend and you got to yeah. go guard him. You can definitely see that's a um, advantage that he feels like he has today, and he's looking for it a little more. He goes in and gets a good rebound, and. It's just a one-point game for Evangel. Oh, great pump fake on the outside. Quentin Harvey is doing good work for Baker University. They got what the lead. Run. Fans are fired up, feeling good right now. Been down the whole game and just weathered the storm and weathered the storm. And, you know, they've taken control of these last three or four minutes. Pritchett trying to find his way, and he Man. really just willpowered that one in, and he's going to get a chance to make the old-fashioned three-point play from the line. That's just, that's just being a great player right there. Yep. <laughs> Good defense, had him out of whack, they're kind of all over the place, and, you know, he gets stuck and jumps off the wrong foot, flying away, <laughs> and well, one floater. Um, yeah. uh, and great, great finish. Baker's on a 7-0 run. Sure. And he knew they just needed to get one. And I think he took the last couple, the last two shots he took yeah. for that. I think he kind of knew it was coming too. And yeah. he tried to hold off. It's his third foul. That's that's a tough that is, that one is for not Coach one, Capel. That's not one Coach Capel is going to want him to give yeah. away right there. That's just the the risk versus reward factor right there when you're playing with two. He kind of knew it right when he did it, too. Yeah. Started biting his jersey. You could kind of see it on his face. And yeah, and he really did try to hold off. He did. He tried. He did. It just, you know, it looked like it was there, and then it wasn't. And I think he, I think as soon as he, uh, I think as soon as he made the move, he kind of knew he had uh, messed up. And I think that was a little short. It, well, when you get in, sometimes you forget uh, that you got the foul problem. Yeah. And, and you're oh, it's coming been a off while. the bucket. Yeah. And and he's been, he's been for a playing minute, yeah. clean, and, and then you just kind of forget about it. That's a, that's a big one for later in the game, though. Oh, it is. So that's, a, that's definitely a big play. I do think uh, Coach Capel's going to just trust him. Oh, sure. He, yeah, he, he, he's a great control player. Oh, that's nice. Great fake and then under for coffee. Good nice. dish from... Rigatuso, and a great finish from Quentin Harvey. They're getting the machine going right now. Yeah, Harvey's having a half. Great half. Harvey's got 19 in this first half with four rebounds. And that one's easy. Someone fell asleep. It looked like it might have been Wittick. Easy bucket for Evangel. Because the thing is, you had control of the game and you felt like things were going well, and then. Evangel just methodically. In and out. Evangel just Harvey. methodically just find baskets, and the next thing you know, you're like, man, felt like we were playing pretty well, and you're down again. Yeah. <laughs> Dave ball over the middle, and that's just better defense from Baker. They're going to take a 30-second timeout. Uh, 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 Coach Dooley. I think this might be his one that he's. Yeah, the, yeah, right. Because you, you, you're not going. You got to use one. Right. Yep. And so burn the 30. Yep. Good time too. Um, yeah. Little chaotic right there. 
um, of Angel had kind of, you know, after their, their run of Angel had settled down and kind of taken over the game again here for a minute. Just settle them down, get them into a good set, try to finish this last minute 30 um, the right way, get into the, get into the halftime, you know, where you want to be right here in striking distance. So Henry, Wittick, and Harvey all have four rebounds each. So it's not just one man's job to crash, Coach. Everybody senses the responsibility to go and get rebounds. You know? Smith goes, no, that was Wittig goes up. He gets it blocked, swings it over to Rigatuso. Rigatuso tries to bank one home. I, I know he doesn't feel extremely comfortable out in the perimeter, and his game is more attack slash. And I, I think I would like to see him try that yeah. little, you know, I think, he, I think he thought he was going to come meet him a little more than he did. And yeah, yeah. He jumped a little happen. early. Probably had a little bit more time. Great pass. Hunt with the block. Another block, but they're going to say a lot of body from coffee from behind. Wait, way to stay with He really got him with a little body the first time, too. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, way, to way to stay with it from Rigatuso right there. You know, a couple tough plays for him in a row, and that's one of the times you can put your head down a little bit, but you see the willpower. That's national tournament basketball right there. Get blocked, um, get it right back, and then you know, that second jump is a, is a key, key, key part of Baker's game. Not just his, but uh, several people on that team. Yeah. They do like to attack, man. Very good. Down, very downhill team. Coffee gets the rebound. They ball, nice dish. The coffee finishes it off. The ball's got you and everything out here. Yeah. He just, uh, he's gritty. Where do you need me, coach? Just let me play. Where do you need me? Here comes Wittick. They get it to the sharpshooter, Richardson. He's off. No call there. No. That is uh, go to your locker room bu buzzer. I know it was a desperation shot. But yeah, he definitely yeah, got grabbed right hit. there. <laughs> he got hit. There was no <laughs> doubt about that. It, it could have been easily shoot three with double zeros on the clock. Pritchett's got seven. He worked really hard for those seven. And uh, DeVault with eight, three rebounds. There you go. You see the breakdown of all the players. And Harvey with 19 of Baker's 35 points. <laughs> <laughs> what a half. <laughs> you know, what a half. Phenomenal half from him, and I'm sure they'll be looking to, you know, spread that wealth a little bit. But, you know, if he can take them home, then take them home. Just somebody show up and do what you need to do. Yeah. I mean, it was uh, Pritchett's uh, uh, night last night. I mean, sure. he, he did what he had to do it all, the whole game, put the team on his shoulders for scoring, and then the team just responded, did what they had to do. And uh, maybe this is uh, Harvey's night. And it's uh, what big players do. You count on them sure. to show up and, and deliver, as uh, we would say. All right. So Baker comes back. They were down by seven with four minutes left in the half, or six. And then they made a 7-0 to run, took the lead. And then they just kept that lead for the final three minutes. And they are up 40 to 35 over the Evangel of Valor. And I expect this is going to be a very, very tight game all the way down to the end. You're not going to want to miss the second half. And we have some special appearances from both teams up here in the booth uh, for the second half. So make sure you stay tuned 
for some of the excitement. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're watching the Sagu Sports Network. Your power is unstoppable. And with us cheering you on, there's no limit to where it can take you. Baylor Scott and White Health, the power to live better. someone with your money, you're part of something greater than yourself. You're investing in a principle that it takes individuals to create a community, that we are stronger when we support each other, that at some point everyone will need a helping hand, that a meaningful purpose can be found in a calling. At AGC, we're banking with a purpose so you can live for yours. power is unstoppable and with us cheering you on there's no limit to where it can take you Baylor Scott and White Health the power to live better when you trust someone with your money you're part of something greater than yourself you're investing in a principle that it takes individuals to create a community that we are stronger when we support each other. That at some point, everyone will need a helping hand. That a meaningful purpose can be found in a calling. At AGC, we're banking with a purpose. So you can live for yours. power is unstoppable and with us cheering you on there's no limit to where it can take you Baylor Scott and White Health the power to live better
This world is in need. Cynicism, skepticism, pain, confusion, conflict and division grip our society, our humanity. A hundred years ago, a man named P.C. Nelson saw the need and decided to do something about it. Our institution was founded with a vision to give men and women a better understanding of the Word of God. So they can answer the call, be equipped, and begin to heal the world. The need remains, and now it's our turn to act. Will we answer the call in this generation? Will we be the ones who bring light to the darkness? Or will we miss the opportunity and let the world pass us by? Throughout the history of this institution, we have said yes to training spirit-empowered leaders for every arena of culture. From the marketplace to the mission field. Today, we say yes again to the call to reach more people, to extend our borders and take the mission further. Today, we say yes to the next 100 years of taking the whole gospel to the whole world. Will you give your whole life, story, talents, gifts, calling, ambition, for the whole world? Will, will you, you say, say yes? yes? Your power is unstoppable. And with us cheering you on, there's no limit to where it can take you. Baylor Scott and White Health, the power to live better. Trust someone with your money. You're part of something greater than yourself. You're investing in a principle that it takes individuals to create a community, that we are stronger when we support each other, that at some point, everyone will need a helping hand, that a meaningful purpose can be found in a calling. At AGC, we're banking with a purpose so you can live for yours. Your power is unstoppable. And with us cheering you on, there's no limit to where it can take you. Baylor Scott and White Health, the power to live better. When you trust someone with your money, you're part of something greater than yourself. You're investing in a principle that it takes individuals to create a community that we are stronger when we support each other, that at some point, everyone will need a helping hand, that a meaningful purpose can be found in a calling. At AGC, we're banking with a purpose, 
so you can live for yours. Uh, it's time to get this uh, second half. Uh, well, it's almost time to get this second half started. And I am so happy to have, and, and I mean, the, the public just demanded we have <laughs> you back on. And this is the athletic director for mm -hmm. Baker University, Susan Decker. You did such a great job yesterday, and I had a blast. I actually had a blast. I, I went home and told my wife, and she said it sounded like y'all were having a blast. So, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. Thanks it, for having me back again. No, this is great. But I, I am going to be the instigator for this second half, and I teased it in the first half. I, we, we had something special for the viewers, and we're going to bring um, uh, Isaac Granado on, and he's the SID from Evangel, and I'm just going to referee the match as you guys, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, <laughs> he, he will come on, and uh, but we'll, we'll talk about the game, and I just want you guys to share your thoughts about how you feel, it, you, you guys are the most familiar with how your team should be playing, and, uh, and let's just talk about, you know, what do you see, is this normal, are you playing above average, below average, and you and I kind of shared uh, some thoughts about the first half where uh, maybe you felt like uh, Baker was uh, a little subpar in defense. Um, and uh, they got beat on the back door a little bit. But they're putting the ball in the bucket. Yeah. And, uh, at, and they did this yesterday. They did not panic. And in the last five minutes, they owned. And they did a really good job. What did, what did you see? Well, I think when you talk about the last five minutes or even a, a second half, that's a tribute to the – um, maturity of our team and, and oh, how many yeah. guys we have back from last year yeah. and and I know coach Dooley knows this and I was talking to some people yesterday after the game I think the difference in us winning that game yesterday is we had been there last year we had been in a tough situation last year losing at the buzzer last year and um, you know all these guys are back from last year and and uh, just ready ready to start a second half here yeah, and uh, the buzzer goes off. So let's turn around and, and get situated. We're going to bring Isaac in here. Can we hear you, Isaac? Um, I hope so. You yeah, all right? I got you, man. All right, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Talk to us about Evangel, and, and you, you really know this team well, and we've had some great in-depth uh, conversation about uh, Evangel and their play style. Um, talk to us about the first half. What did you see? What were they not doing great? Were they doing things better than average? Yeah, no, I think I think we had an efficient first half, obviously not as efficient as uh, we had yesterday against Florida Memorial. Yep. Um, but I think we were running our motion really well. Um, gotten a little bit of foul trouble there. Obviously, Josh has three right now, and he's kind of the guy that we talked about a little bit yesterday that makes us go a little bit. So we're going to just see him maybe have a better half on Evangel side of things. I'm sure Susan doesn't want him to do that. But, uh, <laughs> Here yeah. we go. All right. This is made for TV. <laughs> and, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, oh, the, Dave Vaughn, he's had a great game today. He had a really stellar game yesterday, but he has brought all that energy back to the court today. And here comes there, Dave Vaughn and Rigatuso. They've just been going at it today it's been amazing to watch but if you're just joining us uh we have a couple more voices other than mine and susan decker from baker the athletic director of uh, baker university and the sid for evangel isaac granado is here and so i'm just going to kind of let them duke it out and, uh, <laughs> and we'll, we'll talk about um how things go so a, a, as and, and i i've I've got the referee shirt on today. There you go. <laughs> Hopefully, you won't need it too much. No, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, not. I'm just trying to, you know, get more viewership. Yeah, you know, just come on. <laughs> it's the it, the script that uh, you, you write for good TV, right? Exactly. The goob. 
doesn't get that I think he tried to pass that after he went up for the shot. He did. I thought he was going to shoot it too, and he decided he wanted to try to pass it down low, which not a great decision on his part. Uh, there was a little bit of uh, controversy at, at halftime, right at the beginning of halftime, where the scorebook uh, didn't reflect the right fouls. Uh, did you hear any of that conversation? I, I did not. I was busy making a halftime score promo. <laughs> so. Okay. So um, uh, they had uh, not assessed Coffee's fouls correctly. They only had him at two on the scoreboard. But the official, there's two scorebooks at the table. The official scorebook had him at three. And then they broke the news to Coach Capel, which, as you can imagine, he was not very happy about. Yeah, oh, my I'm goodness. Sure. I'm definitely sure that fired him up. And, hey, it looks like it might have gotten to the team a little bit, too, because they're coming out pretty hot from the floor. Manrique with a nice three there. Making up for uh, the deficit from the first half from the three-point line. And Harvey had a really good shooting half uh, in the first half and uh, takes his first three of the second half and comes up just a little bit short. Dave Alt. And he's just money from that spot. I mean, he, I. Is this I, what his game was all year long? It, it was, you know, I got the chance. I uh, worked the uh, Missouri State uh, High School Sports Association's uh, uh, state championship game two years ago whenever Garrett was a senior in high school at Norwood, Missouri. Um, and man, he's just, he's one of those guys that gets the energy going. You know, he drives, he drives tough to the basket. And um, as you saw there, that floater, it's, it's just pure for him. Yeah. Um, but the, the one thing that I would say that I didn't get to mention at the beginning of the half is if there's a key for Evangel to win the game, we've got to slow down Quentin Harvey. 19 points and a half. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's a little that's more than you want. <laughs> yeah, no, that's just going to be a really tough to do because he, he got a lot of those not with just uh, blown coverage or single. He just attacks you and makes you foul him. Uh, there was some double teams and triple teams he, he kind of slipped through. Uh, he was he, He's up for the challenge today, obviously, and uh, doing a great job. Pritchett's been slowed down. He had such a big night yesterday. Um, but uh, some of the other uh, guys around Pritchett have definitely picked him up. Yep. And Pritchett had seven. I mean, no, nothing to uh, uh, sneeze at in, in the first half. So he still had a good half. Oh. It just it wasn't quite what we saw uh, yesterday. What, what What's a key, Susan, for uh, Baker? Like well, what, 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 they're, they're getting down, and we've seen this. They're, the leads get out, and then they bring it back. Yeah. You know, I, I think the thing, and I mentioned this when I first came up, we're, our, our half-court defensive sets are, have not been great tonight, but that's a, a credit to Evangel also because of their back cuts and their motion offense and, and pin-down screens. They do a really, really nice job of running their, their stuff, and we're, we're not – guarding that very well off the dribble or off the uh, back cut. So I think that's a key here in the next five minutes or so. we got to make sure that we're cutting down on some of those easy buckets. Yeah, and uh, it, it's it's not a fancy or flashy type of offense that Evangel runs, but it is extremely efficient. So they don't miss their screens. They, they get wide, they set them hard, and they know how to run off of them. And for a defense, uh, you know, that just can get very annoying. And you've got to be co just very committed to driving through those screens. Yeah, Magoo gets a foul. That's the one thing I would say about Evangel's offense, uh, running a motion offense. In my perspective that I see it as is, you know, if not, if all five players are not consistently moving, it's not gonna, it's not gonna go well. And so obviously with the stakes heightened during the national tournament, You've got to make sure that your guys are all locked in. Everyone's moving, rolling off screens, cutting to the basket. It just makes it to where your offense is much more efficient. Now, there's been times this season where, you know, you're in that middle of the season, that grueling time where you're just trying to get through each game. And some of the guys aren't on the same page, you know. And so that's kind of what led to some of those losses that we had in the middle of the year. Um, but tonight we look pretty good. 
Florida Memorial game, we looked really good. So. Yeah, you did. And, you know, uh, maybe slightly uh, overachieving according to the numbers. Yeah. But uh, – and, and that brings me to my next question for both of you is do you feel like your – teams uh, are peaking right now. Are they pe It's very important to go into the tournament, um, and you've already had conference tournaments, so this postseason play, um, is there a low? What's the sense? Are they starting to peak right now? You know, I think from, from Baker's perspective, I, I would say that, yeah, we, we've played some really close and games in the heart. You know, the heart uh, teams that we've played all year have just kind of beat up on one another, and um, but also to that, John, the other really important factor is our team's healthy, right? And right. That, that's another thing that I think we're, we're pretty healthy right now. And um, the, the one guy we're missing that would help some is Corey Jones, who's, who broke his hand several weeks ago. But otherwise, we're, we're pretty healthy. So um, I would say we're hopefully peaking at the right time. Well, yeah. it looked like it last night for sure. And, and a lot of times you can uh, shield off uh, some of the, the – the low or negative part uh, by just playing great defense. And, and for sure, Baker was on point defensively. Go ahead, Isaac. Yeah, to answer your question, I'd say from Evangel's side of things, you know, we ended the season um, with a loss in the quarterfinals um, against St. Mary, which was a tough game. One of those games that you kind of wish you had back. You know, you had some plays in the second half that you kind of want to get back. We turned the ball over a little too much. And you know, the thought was almost, are we peaking right now? Are we really, because before that, we had had a big win against Oklahoma Wesleyan, who was nationally ranked, and we had won eight of the last nine. Um, so you thought, yeah, we're really playing our best basketball. And then you lose that quarterfinal game, and you never want to do that. And so coming into it, you know, we took on Florida Memorial yesterday. We were on a two-week break. We hadn't played a game in two weeks. So it's really easy for you to feel almost like you might not be peaking anymore because you just haven't played in so long. Um, but the performances that we put forth yesterday and what we've done in the first half today makes me feel like we're playing the best uh, the best basketball at this time of the year, the best Evangel-style basketball this time right. of year, I guess is the best I got you. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I think the thing, too, that I see with, with both of these teams, really, is not there's not a lot of um, – errors that are made on both these teams. I think they're both really disciplined offensively and defensively, and that makes a big difference at this time of year as well. Well, this is the first year that uh, Evangel has not played in the heart of America Conference. So, oh my goodness. Rigatuso is, is starting to kind of take the mantle and, and put his team on his shoulders. Uh, four quick points, and he's got a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play here. But uh, you, you guys normally play at least twice in the years, maybe sometimes three times, conference tournament setups. But uh, no matchups this year for the first time in a very, very long time. And you had to come all the way down to Texas <laughs> to, to, to make it happen, that Baker Evangel. Is this a big rivalry? Uh, do you, do you, I, I'm, you, you're – a little I'm bit pretty new. young. Yeah, so. you're, you're pretty <laughs> new to a banjo, so I'm sure Susan could speak to this. But is this historically a uh, – what? I, I don't even know the, the lay of the land, the geography. Sure, how, yeah. how far are you guys apart? And what – in the conference, you know, it's usually one team that you're just, yeah. man, <clears throat> um, I, 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 I cannot lose to that team. Yeah. We're about three, three and a half hours from Springfield. Okay. Um, I would say – over the years, um, even when I was coaching, there there have been great games with Baker and, and Evangel, both on the men's and the women's side. But I wouldn't say it's a rivalry type of, of game. Um, I think just because of the distance. Um, but they've always been very competitive games, very, very um, back and forth games. Uh, but I wouldn't say, John, that it's a, it's a like, have to win this yeah, game yeah. tonight. Not it's, a super rivalry. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Who? Who is Baker's super rivalry? Well, it depends on the sport. But <laughs> okay, if, fair. If, if, you, a, if you ask since me. Since we're playing basketball. Yeah, I would say it's either Benedictine or Mid-America, which, okay. they, you know, they're the closest ones around us. Mid-America is about 30 minutes away. And, oh, wow. And Benedictine is about an hour and a half away. So those, are, those really are the two that um, probably most of our teams think about as rivalries. Are, are you guys uh, on the Kansas side? or uh, We are on the okay. Kansas side, yes. 
And, of course, Springfield's deep in, in the heart of yeah, Missouri, I believe. Right, right in the Ozarks. Alvarado tries to throw the alley-oop. <laughs> Dylan Smith tried to just, just wrangle that there. in, yeah. Instead of just tapping it. I think he was trying to control it. And then he finally tapped it. I'm not sure how they call that a travel when he doesn't have the ball. I thought they called him out of bounds and they called a travel. Was it agreed or I think one, it was the disgusting. One, yeah, one one ref. He doesn't. Oh, it looks like they're gonna go with it. They're gonna yeah, they're gonna keep the call the same. I'm yeah. not sure what it ends up literally in the book, but ends up as a turnover. Yeah, it's a turnover <laughs> for Baker. <laughs> That is facts. Oh, there we go, Quentin. And Quentin got his first three of the second half, having a very hot first half. And that was a much needed bucket, cutting this to a six point lead. And now Dylan Smith getting in on the defensive action with the pressure. Ooh. Yeah. Good D, good D there. Yeah. Alvarado got down there so quickly and hit the ball. He didn't realize that it landed in bounds, and it hit his foot. Yeah, that's a good run through there. I, I think personally, that's something that you should do a lot more. But a lot of people like to block shots, and so people yeah. like to try to trail and get it off the put it off the backboard. But if you're a short guard like that, cut through right through and get your hand in there. So true. Wittick to Smith, and now Ty Henry, wide open. Oh, that's a big rebound from Quentin Harvey. And this is what Baker has done at least the last two days. No panic. Just went, they, they were just down uh, 13 points, and now they've got it to five. They just or fight, four, John. Just, sure. Yeah, they, they've got some fight in them, that's for sure. That, stems, that stems from Coach Dooley. He, yeah. he is a competitor. Yes, I, that is not hard to believe. He is very excited on the sidelines and, and into every play and just really ramping his team up at all times. So this is going to put Wittick on the line. He hasn't scored this evening, but he does have two rebounds and three assists, which Go along with the roll, the point guard roll. And this is the first. Harvey's got 24, and Rigatuso has 16. Ty Henry with seven, and I could tell Dave, uh, as long as Pritchard, uh, Pritchett's been in the game, he and Henry have been facing off on defense. And that has been quite the defensive battle. Yep. And both are very potent scorers. So th they, they have been limiting each other on the scoring side of the sheet. So Wittig did get the second one to fall, bring this to a three-point game. And that is his first point of the game, which means the Wildcats now have five players in the scoring column. Coffee gets it out to Alvarado. Alvarado, it almost gets picked off from Smith. And that is just a great attack from the vault. Yeah, if, if we want to start to make another run, we're going to need Garrett to definitely Get more well, he, of that money down in the paint. Yeah, he, he's he's kind of like uh, the guy that has the uh, flint sticks. Yeah, he, he creates the spark. <laughs> yeah, 100%. and and uh, they the last big run it really started on two two big buckets By from him. him. Yeah. Harvey, sizing it up. Oh, he cuts right past Coffee, mm. but misses the layup. Not the easiest layup, but uh, it's a nice still, move to get inside. That's still for makeable. Sure. 
And Smith for Evangel converts one. That's his first points of the game. Two back-to-back -back yep. misses for Harvey and Susan Decker here filling the pain, needing the bucket. Yeah, he almost made that a little bit harder than it needed to be, it looked like, from, yeah. from here. Yeah, if he would have just stopped and popped, mm -hmm. you know, from about six feet away, I think that would have been super easy. And he faded away. Yep. And he's, he's asking the ref, hey, uh, I just wanted to be the same. I'm getting hacked. You guys called me for the hack there. You know, you really know a player is good whenever you watch them start to drive in and you just feel yourself holding your breath like, oh, <laughs> it's man. true. <laughs> From my side of things, I'm like, please don't make it. No. <laughs> yeah, very yeah. very true. That is very true. Yeah, and, and uh, especially uh, with uh, Pritchett uh, last night, it just felt like any time he was going in the shooting motion, he was going to score. Yeah. No, I think Garrett, or excuse me, Josh, he played really loose last night. Um, you know, the, I think the foul troubles hindered him a little bit in this one. Hasn't really been able to build a rhythm. Um, so hopefully under 10, he comes back in and maybe gives us a little bit more of a boost. For sure, uh, Coach Capel is definitely playing this safe mm -hmm. and uh, keeping Pritchett on the bench. I think, it, you know, he's... The, the common logic is uh, to cut this thing into quarters in your mind, although we yep. play in halves. And uh, a foul, and so I, I imagine after the 10 minute media timeout, we'll, we'll probably start seeing Pritchett. Yeah, I think there, there's a part of it that just comes into play for everything. You know, the media timeout, that's another thing, is you know that you're gonna get a media at under 15, under 10, under five, and so you kind of use those to your advantage. You tell the guys, hey, don't gas yourself out, but play hard. And then you're going to get that long media timeout, and that'll help you out a little bit. Magoob throws it out of bounds, and Evangel gets another free possession without a score from Baker, and they're up nine. So they keep kind of rocking this chair back and forth, and now Magoob gets a really good steal. And the dunk. And that's what it's going to take. And this is when we see Baker at his best. They create some steals, and then they get good scores off of it. And the, the poking and prodding from the Baker defense is paying off. The strip, Magoo gets down on the floor. And Alvarado... Jumps on top of Magoo, trying to get the ball. And they're going to call that a jump ball, I believe. So yep. possession to Baker. Could have easily been a foul. One thing, if you're watching from home also, Noah went out, uh, Rigatuso, I think he's getting his ankle rewrapped. I think he maybe tweaked it on a uh, play at the basket, a couple trip trips ago so hopefully he'll get back in here soon I see uh, the Sagu trainer head trainer working on him he's in great hands Stuart Dunn is one of the best most well-known trainers in the business he uh, he also uh, helps out the Dallas Mavericks is that right yeah oh free shot that one's a little long so could it make Evangel pay with the minimum numbers A little touch foul. Yeah, I think we got we got a little lucky on the other end there. You know, it looked like Garrett had a good hold of the ball, and then right as soon as the guy went to stick his hand out there, he released a little bit, so they were able to get that free opportunity. And yeah, that's that's kind of Garrett's offensive plan right there is to just drive down the middle and you know draw some contact, maybe get a foul call, but usually he's pretty pure on those little three foot jumpers. Well, he has opportunity to get uh, his 21st point here from the free throw line. The three foot jumpers are not in my favor. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> They've been very strong. Well, when you got a guy like DeVault uh, who's so consistent. 
Salvi comes down with the rebound. An extra possession. Pritchett is in the game, and that is a great pass from Salvi to Coffey. 11 point lead for the Valor. Smith trying to make something happen. Hits Magoob over the top. Magoob almost gets it stolen. And that is not going to hit the rim, so the shot clock will stop play. And I believe that's going to be a media timeout right on the 10-minute mark. Perfectly stopped on 10 minutes. So Evangel, just make note, Evangel, 11-point lead with 10 minutes left to play in this second round game. This is the championship game for the pod. I know they don't, they don't really call it that, I guess, but uh, they will be champions of the pod, whoever <laughs> wins. Yep. Yeah, I was looking at the uh, rest of the field last night, and I kind of titled this one the upset pod because all the uh, higher seeds won their games. Yeah, you got a 10. Five. Well, this is not unusual to this bracket. If you'll look, the, the number three pod, it, uh, 11, uh, one, and then if you go over to the Kramer quadrant, 11 and 14 won, the 10 won. Yeah. So I saw something last night. I think three of the six seeds won or lost. So you don't want to be a six seed this year. That's that's something. Central Baptist. Uh, I I I'm assuming maybe you guys are familiar a little bit. That's in your neck of the woods, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, they're really performing well. Yeah. Uh, having a great um, getting in, you know, having a great end of season run and. Uh, winning the um, American the Midwest, Midwest yep. uh, conference. You know, I think I think they kind of maybe felt a little slighted coming into it because you know they won that conference and they were still a little bit of a higher seed. Um, Mid America is obviously a superb team. Mm -hmm. um, Anthony Brown's a really great player. So yeah, he is. Um, I watched a little bit of that game. I was able to watch the overtime and then the double overtime. And man, I mean, Central Baptist just offensively, when they get into a rhythm, they really start hitting shots. Well, if you could get Brown the ball, you know, it's. Uh, oh, 100%. Yeah, it, it's usually a done deal. And he played great last night. So now I'm sure Coach Dooley is impressing on his team that the, uh, the, the possessions are critical. We're at critical mass here. The turnovers are not going to help. No, Dylan's trying to do too much. He's trying to do too much. That basket right there, uh, that's Gary DeVault's 22nd point. That ties his career high right there. So I just had to grab the game notes and take a look. But yes. <laughs> that's a good, a good factoid. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so DeVault has come to. Dallas, Texas, and just had a big, big successful tournament in rounds one and two. I can't remember what he ended up with uh, yesterday, but it, 17. Yep, 17. Yep, and, and then it's tough to top your performance from round one to round two because it's back to back. I mean, uh, almost, well, really literally 24 hours uh, later for him. Yeah, oh, exactly. Man, just rolled right off the rim. So we'll have to wait for that career high basket. <laughs> Magoob from downtown. And Russell got boxed out, so he couldn't get his hand on it. So Evangio really covering the paint well on defense. Pritchett off the mark. Wittick trying to use the speed to get in and either dish or get a score. And 
Baker just needs one to fall. They need to see one go in the bucket. Yeah, I think we're definitely getting a little fortunate here. Um, there's been some open opportunities that just haven't been made. Uh, 24 Griffiths, I, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Susan, but I believe he's a very good three-point shooter. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, he is. So. The best yeah. 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 on the team. Yeah, he is. He holds us the school record. He had two games, I believe, this uh, year where he had hit seven. Really? Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. He's, he struggled here yesterday and today a little bit. That was I thought that might go in. That was a good look for him. Yeah, that and that was, uh, I, it just feels like tired legs uh, syndrome there where it's just short and off to the left or right. There it is, career high. <laughs> <laughs> He's still acting like it's the beginning of the game. I know. That, that went in, uh, Garrett, uh, by the way, so <laughs> you don't have to be too upset. It didn't go in the way he wanted, though. Yeah. <laughs> Nice slash attack there from Rigatuso. And I think he, he's just, he, he might not be feeling great. Uh, I see him nursing uh, the ankle just a little bit. Oh, my oh. goodness. Salvi wakes up and hits a really deep three there. That's what we like to see. That's actually Steven's first three-point make of the season. So he, uh, has been, he's been, over his career, a consistent three-point shooter. Um, and I will say he has a, a fairly flat, not really a high arcing shot, um, but he's just one of those guys who really, he's got to get confident, you know, mm -hmm. and he just hit that three. And like I said, that's his first of the season. So hopefully that starts a trend for him. Wittick measuring up Mason. That's going to be tipped out by Coffey. He doesn't think he actually hit it. He wants him to look. Yeah, Jace is one of those guys who uh, wants you to look at anything if it's a little bit questionable <laughs> to him. So. That's great. Every team's got to have one. Oh, of course, of course. So Harvey's back in the game. He forces one up. Had the, the, the wrong spin on it. Now, we've got the three big players, the score makers, and Ty Henry, Quentin Harvey, and Rigatuso. So they're going to have to just dig deep and make some things happen. And really, this would be a good time for Ty Henry to wake up, yeah. find him in the corner. I noticed that they really haven't, uh, yesterday they were finding him in the corner a lot. And uh, it looked like he was very comfortable with that three point shot. Maybe run some plays, get him open yeah, in his a, comfort zone. He had a really good game last night. He's he's one of those guys who, and I'm not even, I don't, I'm not a baker, so I'm not going to be an expert over here. But from what I've seen this season, he's been a very consistent shooter for them. And I think everyone in the nation saw his fadeaway yep. <laughs> three-point shot to beat Graceland in the Heart of America Conference semifinals. So. Yeah. No, he, he is a, he's a capable scorer, but uh, a really, really good shooter. But one thing that I think may go unnoticed, because uh, he's kind of thin and long, he's really good defensively. Yes, he is. Yeah. Very good. Yep. So solid defensively. Yeah. And he doesn't take bad shots. I think we talked about that yep. a little bit last night. And um, he, he just hasn't had a whole lot of looks tonight. That uh, a tribute to Grayson's defense. But Ty's one that he is a, a very humble young man. The, the three-point shot that we're talking about that uh, won the game at against Graceland in the semifinals. Um, he hit it and just acted like it was just another day and everybody else is celebrating on the court and he's just walking, just walking around like it's a normal day. So very humble young man. Yeah, he looks, uh, he's carried himself very well uh, since uh, we've laid eyes on him down here. Um, they've been down here for a few days. There we go. And he gets it. Right on cue. Right on cue. That's it, Ty. Most important job you have, student <laughs> athletes, make your commentators look good. 
<laughs> that one's way off from Salvi, but a great rebound from Mason. And they're going to get Salvi for being over the back. Good seal off by Magoob. Yeah, that was a really good seal off. I mean, I think. I don't know if that was a foul where they, they probably could have just let that go. Yeah, it, I just it was one of those seals, seals though, contact. where you know yeah, you, you see the guy jump and it's like. Yeah, and he fell down. Yeah, you're gonna get that call most of the time. So Avanger will be shooting one and ones from this point on. Until they get in the double bonus, I guess. Oh, that was just touched by Mason somehow and knocked out of Harvey's hand. Oh my goodness! Both, both. <laughs> yeah, the, the, oh the, the fatigue seems to uh, be setting in, and they're, they're just stealing the, the ball back and forth from one another in the same place. We may have just had a technical foul here. I don't know if they've reported it yet. We're watching the uh, referees just like you guys are at home, trying to figure out what's going on. I'm going to take a guess here, John. I believe they're going to get a technical foul on Quentin. He must have said something maybe as we're well, lining up for the Yeah, yeah. I, I saw him talking to yeah. the ref, but uh, it didn't look like it was overly animated or anything. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we're just going to the media. Well, it's, that's supposed to happen at five. Oh, I think I, I take that back. I think Coach Dooley called a timeout. Yeah, yeah. he yep. wants to talk it over yep. and make sure uh, they understand what the call is. Yeah, I'd like to be a fly buzzing <laughs> around that conversation <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh. So the five-minute mark has been kind of uh, magical for Baker. So don't, don't lose hope, Baker Nation. Uh, they have done well with that five minutes and under. And uh, yesterday, they weren't quite down this far. Yeah. But uh, let's see, this 15-point lead is so the biggest deficit uh, for Baker at this point. But... Um, they made some good moves on uh, Saigu, been down eight with four minutes uh, left to go in the game and reeled off a lot of points quickly. Get uh, Griffiths and uh, Ty Henry heated up. You know, the three-point uh, shot can really make the scoreboard go zoom. Yeah, I can. In a, in a quick way, you know, we uh, I was looking at the stats the other day, and um, I don't know nationally, KCAC conference-wise, I can narrow it down a little bit, but, you know, we have had a lot of three-point shots shot against us, the most in the KCAC. Um, so, you know, if Baker starts to get hot, you know, they can easily get on a roll here. I know Rigatuso is a capable three-point shooter. I think virtually every person that's on the floor right now for Baker, Baker is a capable three-point shooter, so... Well, Rigged Tuso is more likely to get it done the hard way, mm -hmm. but yeah. uh, he, and he did last night. There was uh, three possessions in which he took it, got the foul call, made the bucket, and he was a big part of that, that final push against Sagu. And so now the foul shots. So there was a foul 
And then there was a technical foul, but uh, you have to shoot the technical foul first. And now Coffey makes the first of his two. And that one rattles in, so <laughs> four, a point, four possession. point play. Yep, yep. 19 point lead for Evangel. Just not a great just, pass. No, no. Did not see the uh, the defense. And they're gonna yeah, say did. Salvi traveled. He did. He shuffled <laughs> his feet. I he thought so too. I wasn't gonna say anything, but I thought he did also. Oh, come on, Susan. You <laughs> call this game. You call it like you see it. You won't offend me, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you got the lead. That, that is so. true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. You get two, so that's nice. Good take. He wanted the contact to get a whistle. So there'll be a media timeout coming real soon. Next dead ball. Good oh, find. that's nice. It's very nice. And Jace just has really good court vision. I mean, I'm sure you guys saw it yesterday, but he had some two really, really tight window passes. and. That one right there is just knowing where your teammate's going to go on that backdoor cut. That one goes down. I believe they're going to call it. And that is going to be on Dave Alt. Which if the scoreboard's right, uh, that is his first foul, which is pretty incredible. He's got 26 points and four rebounds. Three assists. What a game from Dayball. And uh, these teams go to the bench. And now Coach Dooley is just going to have to talk his team into playing some miracle basketball. Yeah, I mean, I think. It'll start with making a free throw here and converting that three-point play. But, hey, got to start somewhere. Got to start somewhere. You're right. The the thing that I'm struggling with though is we can't stop him offensively so then that makes a difference when we're when uh, we're, you're down like we are that can't stop the back cuts and the yeah. the little floaters at the two foot line so well like uh, we just talked about you know we were talking about three point shooting in general but I mean if Quentin Harvey can keep getting inside and getting fouled that's a way to get three points right there now is it the easiest way definitely not um, but knowing Baker, knowing the pedigree of play that Coach Julie has them, they're gonna they're gonna keep rolling. You know, they're gonna be physical, and you know they're never gonna quit. You know, like yeah, you they, said, they, Coach yeah. Julie's a competitor, and so yeah, they will definitely keep competing. That's for sure. So my hope is that Evangel keeps competing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to have some stops and some turnovers. That, that's that's going to maybe make the difference. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I think from Evangel's perspective, you have to use use as much of the shot clock as you can on your possessions. Don't turn the ball over. Um, obviously, they're going to, I feel like Baker's going to come up maybe in a little bit of a token court press, full court press, but just to speed it up a little bit. Called it there, a little 2-2-1. Two, 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 there you go, good find by Jace. Oh, oh, just smoke the layup. That's that's not what Evander wants right now. Oof. Yeah, that. I thought Noah was just going to take that one and get to the rim, but yeah. decided decided to step back on that. That's not that's not a horrible idea. It's just not necessarily his go-to either. Yeah, you know, I, I looked at the stats a little bit, and I've seen, and I don't, I don't know how correct this is, I guess. So I know Noah has maybe struggled a little bit from the three lately, 
Um, but I think at this point in the game, it's something you, you've got to got to go with because 17-point deficit, those threes are really going to swing momentum if you can hit them. In and out for Mason from the three uh, free throw line. Uh, he's he's a pretty good free throw shooter historically. Yeah. Well, Josh is one of those guys who's a sharp shooter. He's really good with the mid-range as well. Um, he's consistent offensive player, and even on the defensive end, you know, it's some, someone you can rely on for sure. I think they're just going to have to uh, commit to getting outside on the wings and corners and try to put up uh, some three-point shots. He's wanting to review again. He can't. He can't review that one. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Jace. That's a little bit of uh, gamesmanship there. He's. Uh, yeah. What's he wanting to review? I, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's nothing at play. Yeah, he just he'll take a look at anything, you know. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the the fatigue you can just see has has really set in. It's been a you know long weekend of good hard play. I don't know how these guys do it at this level. I would yeah. say even in, even in the greatest shape of my life, there's no way I could do. This. Yeah. <laughs> I was a baseball player, so uh, and I was a designated hitter, so we'll put it that way. <laughs> I was not the guy who I was it. out there running and uh, hey, not you super cardio. You, you, you tell story when you're on TV. You tell stories about other people. You don't have to tell them yourself. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> been a great uh, two days, though, here at SAGU. I, I just want to uh, shout out to the administration and the, the people that run an event like this because I know what it takes, and I know it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of people's hands in, in making an event like this run, and they've done a fabulous job. I've been very impressed with all, everything that's happened here this last two days. Well, that's very kind of you to say, and, and uh, our athletic director, Dr. Jesse Godding, is... Uh, incredible at uh, trying to manage the details and, and the finer things and putting the right people in the right places. And uh, it, you're right, it's, th this is not terribly easy to do. And um, being a host and really trying to do it the right way um, is a challenge. Yeah, I want to reflect the same thing that Susan said. Um, Dr. Godding has, wow, Garrett gets up. <laughs> That's a ni nice play by Garrett. But, yeah, no, Dr. Godding, and they've really made us, I feel like the best word to say is like like home. You know, they've, they've provided a lot for us, and I'm sure they're ready. As much as they love this weekend, they're probably ready for it to be a little bit over because it is an exhausting weekend hosting. Um, it, it really is. And then when you have electrical problems, and oh, you yeah. said, you know, uh, you guys had a kind of an issue like that up at Baker when you it guys did, hosted. Yes. Um, that uh, and it's also hard when your team is out and you're you still have to show up the next day to, <laughs> yes. to run yeah, everything course. right. It's, yeah, 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 that that is not necessarily a fun fun afternoon evening to to be here for. So well, again, they've I, done a great job. I think we we all love sport and uh, the competition and um, you know it it it, it beats uh, uh, digging ditches in the rain. <laughs> that is for sure. That is for so, sure. I'm glad I got a job to show up to. Absolutely. Go going along with that, I do want to say the work that you guys do for the Saggy Sports Network is bar none. I mean, it's phenomenal. What you guys put on, um, you know, the commentary, even before the tournament, you know, I've, I've always known about the Saggy Sports Network and everything that you guys have done on YouTube and getting to meet some of your uh, other workers, the guys behind the scenes, you know, they do yeah. such a great job. And they do. I just want to say that, you know, I appreciate you extending an invitation for us to come up here and talk with you um, because I know what level of basketball commentary you guys are. Well, thank you. And, and um, uh, you know, everyone just loves what they do here. And this is, uh, it's, it's quite the treat for us to be able to take on a tournament uh, uh, of this caliber and, and have schools come in, you know, you, you get a vision and kind of a dream, but you hope that you can pull it off. 
And to be honest with you, you know, as soon as I started emailing out, all, all schools just immediately responded, and that makes things go smoother. So, uh, you know, yeah, we, we're pressing buttons and doing things, but it takes, uh, uh, as they say, the uh, teamwork to make the dream exactly. work. Yeah, and, exactly. and speaking of DreamWorks, speaking of DreamWorks, uh, and, and cut, to, cut to our camera, Mindy. Um, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Baker Nation knows this. Today is Susan Decker's birthday. It is. And yes, sir. We wanted to just uh, say oh my goodness. thank you. <laughs> and we got you a cake, oh, Susan. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm going to have to uh, share <laughs> this with everybody in the gym so yeah. it gets going. Is, is, it, is it? So, you know, not all is lost. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm not no. going to call yeah. it over yet, you know, but um, it's not training. But so, the, so. Hey, you got cake. Thank you so much. You that, that means a lot. I, I uh, am, first of all, I'm surprised that that, that happened. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you a lot. But, um, uh, and I, it, you know, it was, it was your folks that let us know. And we were so delighted. Uh, <laughs> and thank you so much yeah, for thank you. Um, putting us uh, in that position. And well, and, I'll, I'll tell you, John. You just share your birthday with us. I, yes, of I course. Tell you what, I yeah, am so I, honored. It's an yeah. absolute pleasure. It, it's been fun to be here, and um, I, I'm going to shout out to my staff because without them and everything that they do back in at Baker, um, gives me the opportunity to actually be here. We yeah. have events going on at, at home right now. I'm sure. And, um, so thank thank all those guys that are that are there, making things happen. Um, I also want to just real quickly shout out to our dance team. They won the Midwest Regionals today. Oh, wow. So they are making the national tournament. Absolutely. So congrats to them. Baker doing big things. I, I love it. Uh, big big wins. You might not get a win every day, but, uh, hey, you, you historic moments here in the Schaefer Center for Baker University. You got your first uh, basketball tournament win. Yep. And last night against the home team. Yep. And... Um, I, man, just just huge momentum going into the Baker Athletics Program. Absolutely. And congratulations yeah. on all of that. And I know great things happen when there's great leadership. And you are sitting in a great uh, chair for uh, leading people. Appreciate and, that. And I can tell you, I, I, like, I can't say enough good things about Coach Dooley. He, he was is, amazing. He is fantastic, that is for sure. And, and and the kids, the student yeah. athletes. Wow, I just represented Baker so well, and you know, I wouldn't uh, expect anything less yeah. to be honest. Yeah. And Evangel's going to walk away. Yes, they're, they are. They're a sister school of ours, and of course, you know, we're we're proud uh, um, to see them go to Kansas City. I believe it, we can probably safely say that's going to happen. Yep. And. Uh, um, Coach Capel's kind of uh, emptying out the bench to make sure that these guys uh, that are going to come back next year are going to get a taste of playing in a national tournament. Uh, even though, you know, it's here in the, uh, in the sister school's gym. <laughs> and, and I see Coach Dooley doing the same thing. And it's always just good to get a taste of what it's like uh, to play, and now you can say, you know, you've officially played in a national competition, which is hard to do. It is. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I don't think people understand the hard work. It's day in, day out. Basketball has the longest season running when, when you're talking about practices all the way through if you make it to post-tournament uh, um, exhibition. And... It is just a grind every year for these student athletes, and they just pour in work two, three hours a day minimum um, and maybe get one day off a week. So uh, the great things will come out of it, but uh, to make it to a national tournament, man, come on. It yep. is a big deal. It is a big deal, big deal. And congrats to Evangel. It's been fun to, to watch them. Yeah, it, that, that, now it's maybe not quite as uh, uh, bitter because they're not in your conference, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they're, they're going and representing the, uh, the uh, KCAC, Kansas yeah. Athletic Conference, um, uh, and 
that I know I, I like those guys up there. Their their commissioner is just a top tier guy. I think Oklahoma Wesleyan will probably I don't want to speak too soon. I, he's a good friend of the coach, uh, Donnie Boswick and he used to coach here. Naturally we're pulling for them. But uh, so, so yeah, they're up. It looks like 53-34 yeah. right now. So, so, so they'll get a looking. couple teams in. Yep. And uh, yep. that's that's big. Uh, unfortunately, let's see. Uh, uh, you guys at Heart of America, it was uh, MNAS. Are, are they in your conference? Uh, Mid Americas. Nazarene. Yep. yep. They're in our conference in Peru State, and okay. us were the three from our conference, yeah. and we were the last one standing today. So. The Heart of America will be done. Yeah, and now it's time to cut down the nets. Yeah. Uh, Evangel will get the, the pleasure of doing that. And there'll be a lot of uh, pictures to take. And this is history. Yep. This is great history. Susan, thank, thank you, you so much. Happy birthday. Thank you. You so spent much. it with us, and, <laughs> and we are just honored by that. Thank you so very much. And uh, good things. We obviously, good things are happening at Baker. Yeah, it's it's a great place to be, and I'm proud of Coach Dooley and his team. I know he's going to be disappointed, but they have nothing to hang their heads about. Absolutely they've they've had a great year and um, got a lot, of, lot to look forward to for sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Susan. John. Appreciate it. Have a great rest of your birthday. Thank you. That's Susan Decker, athletic director of Baker University, who sat in, and also the former women's basketball coach there, Baker, and has uh, assimilated a lot of wins. The winningest coach uh, out of Baker University. And that was a lot of fun. Evangel University, the pod four Naismith bracket champions. And you can see right there, that is, that is gonna, that picture right there will get hung on the walls. That is a really big deal. They get to go to Kansas City for the final 16. Um, let's see if we can see who they will play as that. So it's going to come down to Lewis Clark State and Montana Tech. Yeah, so you guys may want to stay tuned to see if you can catch that. Or you can definitely, uh, uh, that live bracket is up all the time on the Champion Sports Network on YouTube. Um, and you can see how the brackets run down. Uh, the break it. The brackets right now. So uh, it will be one of those two teams that you have to face. Montana Tech has had a great season all year. Um, at, at this point, everyone's going to be tough. So Avanjo uh, has a 15 seed. They may be the highest seed in the round of uh, 16. But nonetheless, they are very capable of, of doing big things. And congratulations to... Coach Burt Capel and his uh, younger brother as the assistant coach and the student athletes that have just put this all together as a team. It is a lot of fun. We'll, we'll kind of hang in and watch these guys cut down the nets. Well, that's a lot of fun. And these guys will keep a piece. And that'll be in their uh, scrapbook or and their memorabilia for the rest of their lives because that's uh, this this is a huge moment in these young men's lives Mr. Hunt gets his <laughs> and they got the celebration playing in the gym see Coach Capel down there taking pictures himself. What a great moment. Thanks for weighing in. Uh, you guys are watching up in Missouri or wherever you are. Valor Nation. Chime in. Put it on the, uh, put it on the chat. Let them know. I'm sure they'll watch. They, you know, this is this stays up for a long time. So th these guys will probably watch a lot of this on the way back home and uh, evaluate how they played, and and uh, they'll see your comments as well.
All right, as you see the coaches winding it up and getting the whole net down, what an exciting time for uh, Evangel Valor Nation. Congratulations, coaches, Capel, and team, and all the fans. This is a big moment in the history books. Uh, the last time Evangel won a national championship was in 2002, and Coach Burt Capel was on that team, helping lead the charge to get that historic win. And their, their, uh, their journey is not over this year, so it's still within reach. And will Coach Capel join a very short list of guys who played in the NAI and won a national championship and coached in the NAI to win a national championship? This is great for Evangel University. All right, this is John Cookman signing off for the last time as the Sagu Sports Network. We're becoming Nelson University. So stay tuned. All the great production's not going away. It's just uh, we're changing names. So the search uh, engine will uh, look a little different when uh, you look us up. But it's been a lot of fun hosting this. Have a great night.